Shalom Bokar Tov. Today's daf Yomi is Subos 86. We're going to start on the bottom of 80, 85B, Pehe Amabase. it tells us, Rav Nachman had a relative, and this relative sold the rights to her Ksuba for a Tova Sana. Tova Sana, Rashi says, here means something, a very small amount because the reason why it was very able to sell for such a small amount, why she sold for such a small amount is because she sold the rights to her ksuva, but it's possible that, it, that they were going to be zero because if she died before her husband, there'd be no ksuva or if she wasn't divorced. So she sold it for a very little amount. But then what happened was Igrisha, she was divorced with Shriva and then after she was divorced, her, uh, at that point, after she was divorced, uh, she died. So she didn't actually collect the ksuva. Also cut top away Labarta. So the daughter got the, got the ksuva. So the purchaser, the person who bought her ksuva from, the, from her mother came and made a claim to the daughter uh, when, when the daughter was going to collect the uh, ksuva from her father. And the daughter was going to collect the ksuba from, from her father and collect it on behalf of her mother. And these people came and they said, no, your mother sold it to us. So Amar Rav Nachman, or Rav Nachman said, he spoke to the community and he said, uh, or maybe it was Amar Rav Nachman depending on the gears, he says, Leiko, Delispe, Lait says, there nobody who can give advice to, to, to this woman so she can, to the daughter, so she can retain her mother's ksuba. So this is the advice that she should do. So since we had learned earlier that even an heir, Shmuel said that even an heir can annul a debt that their, that their parent had, had lent out, and so in this case, the daughter could go and say to her father or her father's estate, you don't, which is in this case her, she herself, you don't owe me, you don't owe the ksuba to my mother. I'm waiving that that debt. And so as a result of that, she'll inherit the full money from the estate, and then these purchasers will get nothing. So indeed, that's what Rav Nachman's relative did. Shama Azla. She went and she waived the debt of the ksuba. Amar Rav Nachman, Rav Nachman afterwards regretted what he did. He said, He said, we made ourselves like, like, uh, like lawyers. That was not a compliment. He says, What was his initial thought process and what was his thought process in the end? Where explains me, Kara Savar, me besarcholo to Salim. And his initial thought was, me besarcholo to Salim. From your relatives, you can't hide, meaning you have to help your relatives. But besof Savar, in the end, he thought, Adam Choshev Shani. In the end, he thought, look, listen, I'm a distinguished person, and people learn from me. And then people will do it, even though they're not the relatives. They will, they'll start giving advice, they'll start charging money, they'll open up a law firm. This is something that that the Talmud was not in favor of. Kufa Amr Shmuel. So now we analyze the statement that Shmuel had said previous that a mocher shtarcho v'chavero. Somebody who sells a debt to a friend sells a note that he has a debt. V'chaz or macho. But then the person who lent out the money goes back and he waves it. He waves the debt that he had lent out. So Ruven had lent Shimon a thousand dollars. Shimon gave Ruven the note that you owe me, that I owe you a thousand dollars. I owe the holder of this note a thousand dollars. Ruven then sold that note to Levi. But now we had said that Shimon could go back to Ruven and say, wave your debt to me. And then Levi's out of luck. He won't be able to collect against Shimon. So that's what Shimon says. It's, it's waved. I feel yourish macho. Even an heir could do it. So says Rav Huna, Brayt Rav Yeshua, Vipikech Havei. Let's say Levi, who just bought this note from, from Ruvain, so now Shimon owes him the money, if he's very smart, Mekarkesh Le'ezuzei. 
then what he'll do is he'll give some money to the borrower. Maybe he'll go to Shimon directly before Shimon can go back to Ruben and say, wave the, wave the debt, wave the loan. He'll give some money to Shimon because of Ishtari Bashmei. And he'll write a new contract that Shimon owes the money directly to Levi. And so therefore, and so therefore, that way he'll protect himself. That's that's the advice of Huna Brader of Yeshua says. So we'll get, get Shimon to rewrite the note. Uh, obviously, that you're going to want to keep the lien from the first note, but this will be an insurance policy, at least a partial insurance policy. Because the lien is only on the first note, not the second note, until the time of the writing of the second note, but still be an insurance policy. Amar Meimar Man de Da and Dina de Garmi. So now we have this concept called Dina de Garmi. So, so what's the difference? What's Dina de Garmi? And what is Grama Benazikin? So Rashi says, Man de Da and Dina de Garmi, Hamachayev Hasagorim, have said the Chavera, one who says that if somebody just indirectly causes a loss to his friend. So the classic case of grama benazikin is, let's say you remove a fence or you place an object there, which allows somebody else's property to get damaged or ruined. That's called grama benazikin. Let's say you remove a fence and then the animals run away, or you place a, a, an obstacle there so that the animals could use it as a ladder and go and cause damage. That's called grama benazikin. But garmi, uh, often one of the, main examples of garmi is because you do something with your own acts to destroy this person's property, but the amount that you destroy, the, it, you don't destroy something where the value is really in it. So let's say you burn a contract that says that this person owes somebody else money. So you burn the note. So that's called garmi. And the Ramban wrote a whole, a whole classic work talking about the distinctions between grama and garmi. So anyway, back to our Gemara. So the Gemara says, man, the don dina de garmi, somebody who does this, somebody who says that if you, if you indirectly cause this loss to this other person, that you're liable, the gali yam alia. So in this case, that in this contract, uh, if so somebody waives the rights to this contract. So let's say Ruvain sold the note that he had on Shimon, he sold it to Levi, and then Ruvain waives the right to the loan. So Ruvain waives the right to the loan to, uh, to uh, Shimon. So now Levi can say to Ruvain, you cost me this money. So somebody who says Dina de Garmi is liable, in this case, indeed, he's cost him money. Man the dying Dina de Garmi, uh, in this case, Megabe Beit Mei Shtar Amalia, he can he could collect the full contract. Here's a Gemara right here, my friend. So, but Boker Tov, Boker Tov, Man Man the Loda and Dina de Garmi, but one who does not say you're liable, Megabe Beit Mei Naira Balma, he can just collect the paper because he doesn't believe that indirect action can co- can, it makes you liable for damages. So all you all you've done to him is. You only sold him the. I only sold him the paper, and 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 therefore you have the contract in your hand. So therefore, what did I cost you? It cost you just the paper. Aulovda, we're in the middle of eighty six A. There was an incident. So there was an incident. That such a case came before Rav Hashi, and and he collected every single thing. Like if even if you buy a beam, which you're intending to. To uh, to carve that you're going to be very careful about the beam. He said he made him collect every penny because he says you caused them this loss because you waived the loan. So Amar Meimar Mishmeder of Chama Ayman the Ika Oleik Suvas Isho Balchov. So we're in the middle of eighty six A. So our Meimar says in the name of Rav Chama a person about whom upon whom such a person there is he has to pay off a ksuva. He has to pay off a ksuva to his wife and also a creditor. Misle Arab Isle Zuse, and he's got land and money to pay. So which one should he do? So Labal Chov, Miss Alkina Bezuze. To the creditor, he should pay. To the creditor, he should pay cash. Isha Miss Alkinale Ba'ara. But to the woman, he 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 should pay her off with the land. Why? 
Because each one goes according to their law. Meaning to say the, the one, the, the, the creditor, he lent him money. And so therefore, that's why he has to pay him back money. And the woman, she was relying upon the lien on the real estate. And so there, and she didn't give him anything. And so therefore, he gives the woman back the real estate, or he gives the woman real estate, and he gives the, the creditor the cash. Below Ika El Achad Ara, Below Chazia El Achad El Achad. Let's say he only has one piece of land, and that's all the money he has, and he can only give it to one person. He can't give it to two. So, so who does he give it to? And they both, both the loan and the ksuba happened on the same day. He has to get money to get married or something. I don't know. So then he should give the money to the creditor, but not, he pays the creditor before the woman. Why? My time. Oh, we have this concept, which the Talmud, which the Talmud repeats in different ways throughout the Shas. But the basic concept is, more than the man wants to get married, the woman wants to get married, meaning to say that there's a stronger incentive for a woman to want the property. And for this reason, we pay the man first because we say the woman would get married even if she didn't have as much money coming in. That's Is the when the woman gets divorced, she's getting the land. Either, either when she's getting divorced or if the husband dies as part of the ksuba, which payable on the man get, dying or divorcing his wife. He says, is this true, that which they said in the name of Rava? So is it true that which they said in your, that which they said, in the Rav Papa said to Rav Chama, is this true that which they say in the name of Rava, this man who owes money and he has land? And then the creditor came and he's making a claim for it. And the, and the borrower says, Rav Moe, zil shkol me ara. Uh, the, and the borrower says to him, go take the land. And I'm reading away, we say to him, zil zabin at va'aisi. You go, uh, you go, um, you sell it and bring me the money. Uh, have way. So is that is that really true? Is, is all this really true? That 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 this concept that you said that that under these circumstances uh, you can tell the the borrower that he has to sell the land to pay off the creditor. You make him do that. Is that really accurate? So I'm really low. He said no. Uh, so. Rav Chama said, no, Rav Papa never, Rav never said that. Tell me this incident, what happened? So I'm going to tell him, yeah, the, the borrower didn't want to pay back. He was saying that, he was saying that he had lent, the, that the money was, uh, that the money, he had money to pay, but he was claiming that the money was from, an, was the idolater's money. He was trying to get out of having to pay it. So who also showed up So because he was acting inappropriately by claiming that he didn't have money when he really did. Therefore, we made him sell the real estate first to sell it off back to us. According to you, who said, according to you, Rav Papa says that you say Priyas Bachov is a mitzvah, according to you, who claims that paying off a creditor is a mitzvah. Let's say the guy says, oh, I don't want to do the mitzvah. Well, what do we do to that person? The, the borrower says, I don't want to do the mitzvah. We weren't. We weren't as follows. Hold on one second. He says, you don't want to do the mitzvah. What do we do? So he says, Tanina Bamed Ramamurum the mitzvah slosase. When do we say of a mitzvah slosase? Going to when when Bamed Ramamurum? When do we say that you get forty lashes? Rashi says by a negative commandment of mitzvah slosase, but by a positive mitzvah, like for example, paying back a loan. Don't you? 
By the way, Raj says, what's the mitzvah of paying off a loan? Mitzvah of a chovo la'ames tuvarav. It's a it's a mitzvah to pay off your debt and to and to speak truthfully because it says hint sedek shia hint shachat sedek malav shachat sedek that your that your positive and your negatives have to be righteous so so you borrow money you have to pay it back so bamed varmamorin do karbaim when do we say that you get when do we say permits a solutase. But that, when do we say you get 40 lashes by a negative commandment? But by a positive commandment, don't you omen well? I say sukkah ve'eno osa or rulah ve'eno osa. We have mitzvah of sukkah and rulah coming up. Let's see, he doesn't do the mitzvah of rulah or sukkah. Then makinus are on top of 86b. Then makinus are on top of 86b. Then we, we don't give him lashes. We don't give him 39 lashes, but we, we strike him until he fulfills the commandment. So we strike him until he pays back the, the loan. That's a quick question. Yeah, sure. So is it worse to violate, according to this, the negative commandment or the positive commandment? Well, the negative commandment, you get 39 lashes. The positive commandment, you just give him the lashes until he decides to do the mitzvah. So it could end up being more, it could end up being less. It could end up, it could end up being more, it could end up being less. Yom Kippur, we say al uh, um, for both. Yeah, we do both. Malka, but, malka um, and Malkat Marzut, right? Yeah. Al Karb, we say uh, we say for the sin offerings that which we would have had to bring in carbon Ola, which is usually said for positive commandments, that the violations that you would bring in Ola. Ba mine rami barhama mira chista reze gitech. Once somebody says, so Rabbi Baham asked this question from Christa, somebody says, This is your get, but you won't be divorced until after 30 days. So she put the get on the side of the public domain. And it was after 30 days, it was still there. It was on the side of the public domain. So is the side of the public domain considered her private domain or not? In order for her to be a get, it has to be in her possession. So it was on the sides of the public domain. So what's the law there? Is she divorced? I'm away. I'm away. So Rav Chista says, ain't a migrashis. It's in public, so it's not divorced. But see, the Rishus Aram, Kershus Aram, and Dhamma, because Rabbi and Shmuel said, both of them said, with respect to the orphans that made a claim on the creditor, and they said, they said this was left in our possession. That's where it was left in the public domain, and the and and the size of the public domain are considered like the public domain. And Morris says, either Rabbi Migrashus, she should be divorced. Me, the Rav Nachman, on the basis of what Rav Nachman taught, I'm Rav Nachman, I'm a Rav Barakua, Aomer Chaveru. Somebody says to their friend, Meshach Parazu. If somebody says, draw this cow and you won't be divorced and you won't acquire the cow until after 30 days, you acquire the cow and even if it's standing in a swamp, meaning to say that the swamp, which is the, at this point, more assumes the same as the Tzidei Rishis is considered a private domain to acquire it. My love, I know I got my Tzidei Rishis don't we say that they're the same? And so therefore she should acquire, she should acquire it. The Gemara says, no. Agam They're two separate things. The Agam is more of a private domain than the sides of the public domain. Or Ikan Amri, some have the opposite version that Amrwe Migurashes, Midrav Nachman, Rav Nachman would say that she's divorced there because the Tzide Rishasaram, Kagam Dami, because the sides of the public domain are like the swamp, where he says that where he says that you acquired the cow. And Igmar says other ah, it's just the opposite. Ain't no Midrashas, Midrav Shmuel. From Rav Shmuel say that the Tzi De Rishas Aram are like the public domain. My Rav, I know Rishas Aram, I know Tzi De Rishas Aram. Don't we want to want to say that the public domain is just like the private domain, and so therefore she's not divorced there? No, Rishas Aram, Mochol Tzi De Rishas Aram. They're two separate elements. Okay, we're up to the next Mishnah. Baruch Ata Adonai Mochol Shach. Omei Moshe Vesishto. Somebody makes their wife, and really the commentaries say, the Rishonim say, the Ryan says, it could be any relative. You make one of your relatives your shopkeeper, or you make them, you know, like the 
manager or part of your business, that you want to make sure that they're honest. Arezeh, what you can do there is Arezeh Mashpia Kozman Sheyotze. He can make her take an oath whenever he wants. He can make her take an oath whenever he wants to make sure that she's being honest with the uh, with the property. Rabbi Eliezer Omer Afu Al Pilchav Al Isasa. He says you can even make her take an oath. And a very small amount, like a spindle, like some thread or some dough that she didn't take any of the dough. <coughs> so says, Rabbi Eliezer says you can make her take an oath. Is that meaning to say, is that is that what's called a Gilgal Shvua? Gilgal Shrua is that you're taking an oath on something else. And once you have to take the oath on the other matter, then you can force them to take an oath on this thing too. Like you get somebody in the room for a deposition. Once you get them there, you can open up another can of worms to go down another rabbit hole. So, so is that what Rabbi Eliezer is saying that you can make them take an oath through a Gilgal or uh, even on the Pilch on the Isasa once you get them swearing or even initially you can make them take an oath on those things. Or says Tashma Hamulo Rebbe Eliezer. Then they they said to Rebbe Eliezer, "Ain Adam Dar Am Nachash BeKfifa." That they responded to Rebbe Eliezer that a person can't live. We had this this phrase several times in our tractate. He said to Rebbe Eliezer, "You can't live with a snake in the basket." Now Iyam is Kishlamo Chatzila. If you want to say that they said this to Rebbe Eliezer Chatzila, Shapir, then it makes sense that if if Rebbe Eliezer says. If Rabbi Eliezer is saying that you can make them take an oath on the, you can make her take an oath on the spindle or the dough, then it makes sense that that she said to him uh, that that she says you can't live with a with a snake in the basket because since you're making me take an oath on my thread, I can't I can't uh, I can't bear your uh, your exactitude way of living but he uh, and therefore I, she's going to get a divorce what yeah that's why she's saying you can't live with a snake in the same basket that's what she's saying that that's why the rabbis agree don't say you can make her take an oath on the spindle or the dough because it's too much but he amers but he amers like they gilgal but if she's if you say she's already swearing about something else then my not going me then what does she care that you're taking an oath She's already asked to take him an oath. So what, it's, not, it's not any harder uh, to, to, to take a second oath, to, take a, to include this in the oath. It's not causing her any problems. Twice as bad. Well, it's the same oath. So, so once you're swearing about one thing, you just add something else. It's not harder. So the Gemara says, the Amulet, no, she says, keep in the kedayakt, basrai, koyai, womatsina, the other banach. No, she says, listen. You're going to start looking at the. Uh, you're going to start looking at me and all these details and these microscopes. Nobody could. Uh, nobody would be able to live. Nobody able to live. You start looking at somebody like that. It's. Uh, it's just not possible. Tashma harei shelo, paters ishto min aneder min ashvua. So let's try and bring a proof that let's say a person, well paters ishto min aneder min ashvua. A person did, did not exempt his wife from having to take a vow. This is the next mission you'll see. Hoshiva Chanvan is a Shemina Petrov. You already made her the uh, shopkeeper or the um, manager. Arezem Ashpia Kozman Shiyur. So he can make her take an oath whenever he wants. Hoshiva Chanvan is a Shemina Petrov. But if he didn't make her the shopkeeper, the administrator, then he can't make her take an oath. Rabbi Lezer says, Rabbi Lezer says, he can always make her take an oath. Because every woman is a manager of some aspect of the household, every wife. So, and they said to him, They said, no, a man, a woman can't live with a snake in a basket. Anyway, See, from here, Rabbi Eliezer says, you can force her to take an oath on something so small. So that's how he said it. That's Rabbi Eliezer's approach. So it says the Mishnah, 
Let's say he says, he writes there, I'm never going to make you take an oath. Uh, so, so what, what is he saying here? Uh, she says, Mara has explained what, what exactly he's exempting her. Uh, but he writes there, I'll not take an oath. Uh, upon you, that, you'll, that you're basically going to take a vow that you're not going to have any benefits from the uh, uh, fruits of the world in, unless uh, I pay your ksuva or your share. But let's say he writes, neither true can't make her take an oath. I will not be who is your share, uh, but he can make her heirs take an oath. Yes, a bomber shusa and those who she may be sold the, the ksuba to. Let's say uh, he's says, I'm not going to have an oath upon you on, the, on your heirs and those who come in your domain. He, he can't make her take an oath, not her, none of the people. But her heirs, but in that case, he can make the heirs take an oath that, that they didn't touch any part of the ksuba. He examines all the heirs. He can't, he can't make her take an oath, nor her heirs, nor the people she might have sold the ksuba. So now the last cause of the Mishnah. Let's say she goes from the, she went straight from the grave of her husband to her father's house. Or she went back to her father-in-law. And she didn't become an administrator of her anything. And the heirs cannot make her take an oath. If she became an administrator, then the heirs can make her take an oath that she didn't touch anything. They can make her take an oath on what happened after her husband died, because that was not part of the original oath. Because that, at that point, it was her. She owed it after her husband died. But they can't make her take an oath about the past. All right, we'll stop the recording here.